morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for our time of prayer, worship, and the Word. Let us pray Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer from the ends of the earth. I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that no matter uh, uh, where we are, no matter what our situation, you can hear us, Lord God, when we cry to you, when we pray to you. You hear us and you answer us, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, that you would continually lead us to the rock, to you, the rock, Lord God, the place of strength, the place of stability, the place of security, as we face the challenges that, that in our world, every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God right now. Oh, 
Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for being with us today. Lord, that you're here, your presence, you're in our lives, you're around us. Lord, we continually ask and pray that you would lead us, that you would guide us into your will. Lord, that you would continue to form your image in our lives. Lord, speak to us, Lord God, even as we look into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in Psalm 61 right now uh, so let's read it from starting from verse one it says hear my cry O god listen to my prayer from the end of the earth i call to you when my heart is faint lead me to the rock that is higher than i for you have been my refuge a strong tower against the enemy let me dwell in your tent forever let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings for you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. The other night, my wife was coming from her parents. So uh, it was a stormy day, so rain was intermittent the whole day. It would go on and it would uh, stop for a while and later on go on again. So my wife asked me to pick her up from the train station. So to avoid traffic, I picked her up on the scooter and it was uh, not raining then. But on the way back, uh, about a kilometer left before our house, it started to drizzle. We had a few intersections left to go and it started to drizzle. It was peak hour, so there's a lot of cars, but so we were, we were stuck in a few intersections and it was drizzling. And while this was happening, I was whispering to myself, uh, don't let it rain, don't let it rain. And also whispering a prayer to the Lord saying, Lord, don't let it rain until we get home. And uh, finally, uh, when we uh, drove into the village where we stay, the drops were getting bigger, and finally we drove into the driveway and parked, got into our ho a house, and the rain poured. And uh, now we can relax, no more, uh, 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 no tension, uh, no uh, pressure to get home right away because we made it uh, home safe and dry. I wonder how many times in life we get pressured to look for shelter. I wonder how desperate we could have been in the different situations where you're waiting, there's this pressure building up, you're, you're talking to yourself, you're whispering prayers left and right, uh, yeah, you're, 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 you're trying to get along, to get to a place of shelter, a place of peace, a place of rest. I, I wonder how many of us have been in a very desperate situation looking for a place of rest. I could remember friends during the Yolanda, uh, uh, when Yolanda hit the Philippines years ago. I, I remember a friend uh, talking about his story of hanging on to a post, hanging on to dear life while the stor storm was raging in a small place where he was shielded from the storm, but yet he could hear everything flying and shaking things around him. And he was 
hanging on to dear life in a sense, praying, but he found a place of rest. And finally, uh, when the storm was over, he could get out. I wonder some, how many of us have survived financial storms in life. I wonder uh, whether we found a place of rest or somebody helped us or somebody became that place of rest for us. I wonder how many of us have uh, been through emotional and relational storms all because uh, uh, and trying to find a place of rest in the midst of the turmoil, trying to understand the confusion and where things broke down, looking for a place where we can just uh, uh, gather strength and gather our thoughts and plan for the next day. We usually find a place, look for a place of shelter so that we can rest and in a sense, fight another day, gather our thoughts, plan, and fight another, regain strength. But today, I also want to show us that the place of rest in God is not just a place of peace and a place of rest, a place of recovering strength, but it's also a place of total victory, a place where, uh, in a sense, we're not running away from the challenge, but God is still doing things so that we can experience total victory over the storms of life. So as we look at this, uh, uh, Psalm 61 today, remember that the book of Psalms was created for the Babylonian exiles. Now these poems and these songs were, and these hymns uh, uh, were already existing, but somebody brought them together, gathered them together, placed them out, <coughs> mapped them out, and, and formatted them in a strategic way. So that the, uh, the, the exiles in Babylon will encounter God and hear God's message, see God's faithfulness. And they would have, in a sense, a, uh, how would you say it, almost like a virtual experience of, uh, of what it was to go to the temple and worship God. So the book of Psalms was created for a people who had lost so much, a people no longer in their home, a people struggling with hopelessness. A people facing the harsh, the difficult, and the confusing realities of their life. So when they read the book of Psalms, they read this, not just, they did they, they just read the Psalms, but they read this with their own context of hopelessness and struggles in life, trying to make sense of where they are. But they also read this with the context of their history, with the context of, the, of King David, with the context of probably the greatest king Israel has ever experienced. They probably heard of King David's exploits, David's wealth and David's power, David's heart to worship God, David's problems from his enemies to his own family, from the time he ascended to the throne and, 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 and serving God and his people. So as we go back to Psalm 61, it opens up with this most powerful, with the most powerful man of his day crying out to God. He's pleading, he's crying out, he's saying, Lord, I'm faint. I, I, he's, he's crying out from a, from a very far place. Lord, I've, I, I, I'm almost to the ends of the earth. I cry out to you. He has a problem, he has a challenge. Interestingly, this is the most powerful man of his day. But he's seeking God. He's been looking for God. He's tired. He's weary. He's broken. He said he's faint. Almost like no more strength. I can imagine, just trying to imagine this. Probably no more strength even to just take another step or two. But he cries out to God. From the end of the earth, he says, I call to you and my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. So David is crying out and he's saying, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He's asking God, Lord, lead me, bring me to a place of stability. The rock was a place of stability, a place of strength, a place where you could anchor in a sense, your concerns, your, your physical situation, your emotional state, whatever concerns you are, the, uh, the rock was a place where you could anchor yourself so you don't get broken and you don't get overrun. There's a place that was in the midst of shaken, a place that cannot be shaken. A place you can lean on and rely on. 
Lead me there, Lord. He said, I need to go to this place. I need to be in this place. Many times we want God to get rid of the difficulties. And we would rather do the rest ourselves. Interestingly, here you find out that David is not asking God to change his circumstances. But instead, he's asking to be led to a place where he could anchor his life and in concern and his hope. Many times we pray for God's peace, pray for God's shelter, but we have our eyes on our circumstances, uh, circumstances. Therefore, we can't find the peace. We're hoping as we're praying that God would change our circumstances, but God is saying, or God wants to lead us to a place where we can find rest and peace, not necessarily a change of what's happening around us. David was praying to be led to the rock. He was looking for the rock. He had his eyes on God, not on what was happening around him, not just on what was happening around him. Many times as we pray to God, God wants to lead us. The question is, are we willing to follow? Are we willing to seek God? Are we willing to focus on God rather than what's happening to us? Then David includes in his cry, you have been my refuge, my strong tower, this seems to be a regular experience for David that every challenge he got, it's either he has uh, uh, multiple challenges coming one after the other that he always goes to God or his re normal reaction to the challenges he faces is to go to God. And it says, you have been my refuge. A refuge is a place of safety, a shelter a protected place, a place that cannot be destroyed or overrun by the enemy. So David looks for the place where his life will not be destroyed. It can be broken, yet God can fix it. But a life that's hanging on to God in God's safe place, ready to keep walking with God. And he says, let me dwell in your tent. The tent was a place of God. David is saying, I want to dwell where you are. A place of God's presence. I'm, I'm reminded of Moses praying to God and saying, Lord, if you're not going to lead us to the promised land, if you're not going to go with us to the promised land, we might as well stay here. Friends, we live in a, in a world where there's so many things we need. We're always challenged. We're, we're wanting new things. Where There's so many nice things. So many blessings we long for. But David here is saying, in a sense, he's focused on the blesser. He's focused on the giver. He's focused on God. And he's saying, Lord, I want to be where you are. Not just a place of blessing. Not just a place where life is comfortable. Not just a place where life is overflowing with abundance. Now, that's a good place, and, and I hope we pray for that. But David is saying, Lord, I want to be where you are. He even says, to be under the shelter of your wings. Picture a bird or picture a, 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 a chicken with chicks. And when there's danger... The, 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 the chicken takes all her chicks under her wings and covers them. A place where you might not understand what's happening around you. A place where you may not see what's next. Yet it's a place where God confronts your enemies. Where God is confronting your challenges. Where God is continually working His will and His purpose in your life. Lord, lead me to the place where I can dwell in your tent. In our world, wealth and power is the place of shelter and rest. I just want to tell this, remind us of this. Money can never be a shelter because money can never bring peace. In fact, the love of money is the root of all evil, the root of all unrest and wars and fighting in our world. It's the root of all heartaches in our world. Notice David's place of shelter is not just a place of rest, 
not just nor a place to recover, nor he nor a place where he could sense uh, he could he, he could prepare to fight for another day. His place of shelter, his place of refuge, God's presence is also the place to keep confronting the challenge. David keeps up his prayers in his place of rest, his requests and his concern. David doesn't stop and keep quiet and say, oh, just give me strength, I'll fight tomorrow. David presses on in prayer. David presses on in intercession. David makes known his desires and his needs and his challenges before God as he seeks the place of rest, as he's in the place of rest. David is not, is not just looking for rest. He's interceding, fighting for his life in the place of shelter. Psalm 61 verse 5 says, For you, O Lord, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. He's, he's standing on the promise of God. Lord, you've given me this heritage. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. David is interceding, Lord, preserve the throne. Watch over me as I worship you, as I perform what you've asked me to do. Yeah, and as I worship you and honor you and pray to you, for you are truly worthy. Place of shelter was not just a place of rest. It was a place to continue the fight. It was a place to confront the challenge. Prayer is not the last resort. Prayer is, in a sense, the front lines of the war and the challenge and, 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 and confronting the challenges the world throws at, at us. King David's place of shelter is not a geographic location. King David's place of refuge is in a person, in God Almighty, in His presence. That's why even when he was far away, he could cry out to God. Even when he was faint, he knew he could call on to God, and God's presence would be there with him. How much more for those of us who are in Christ. Christ's presence is no longer limited to a designated house of worship. But His presence is in us, with us, and even His presence can go through us. In fact, Christ Himself promised He will never leave us nor forsake us. One of, his, one of the Savior's name is God with us. We, when we run away, even when we run away, it was He who came near. Even when, rebel, when, we, when man rebelled and didn't want anything to do with God, it was God who came. And came near. Wherever we go, whatever we face, Christ is in us. Wherever we go in the midst of darkness or light, Christ is with us. We bring the presence of God everywhere we go. Wherever we go, Christ can manifest Himself through us. We carry, in a sense, the place of refuge, the place of strength, and the place of protection with us. As we close, I hope we get encouraged. We realize that God's shelter is a place to be stable, to be secure. That God's shelter is a place to finish the fight, to confront the challenges, and not to run away. God's shelter is a place of worship and gratitude and prayer to Him who protects us, to Him who keeps us secure and stable to Him who fights for us. Let us worship God again. The same hands that hold the sea Still my soul in quiet me The same hands hold the sea still my soul and quiet me you
Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that no matter what happens around us, we always have a place of shelter in your presence, a place where we can be secure, a place where we can pour out our heart's desire, our concerns and our challenges, a place where we can intercede and fight and confront all challenges thrown at us. Thank you for a place of shelter, which is also the place of faith and the place of breakthrough. Thank you, Lord God, that you never stop working out your will. You never stop confronting challenges that the world throws at us. And then you never stop establishing your best, your purpose, and your destiny for all of us. We honor you. We praise your name. You are truly worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.